So another video of DevOps Zach channel. So today we are going to talk about manage code commit and code pipeline multiple AWS account. So how we usually do things huh, before like uh, have the multiple accounts or if you have the code deposit in multiple accounts, uh, multiple OUs. So this is a simple scenario. So we have like two accounts, one is in production, one is in develop account. So we have uh, the code commit repository in each account. So this is the problem, right? So you see, there's no any SSOT, uh, single source of truth. So each time when you have any changes, you have to uh, shift the code to the, uh, the account and you have to move the code with all the, uh, the Git history, all the commit history, uh, sync with the account. So it's very troublesome and very hardship. So why? So why we have uh, such account set up like that? It's mainly for the com organization compliances, right? So some organization compliance, they have to the, the dev account is separated with your production and UAT. So you cannot have the production data in the dev. Uh, for example, if we, so someone can raise the question, okay, we can have the source code in one account and you can build an artifact uh, for different stages and you can store in one, one place. But the thing is, if you when you're doing the code build, the CI part, uh, according to some compliances, you cannot do it in uh, one account. So you have to be in that each environment to do it. For example, uh, if you want to build the, uh, the production code, it should be in the production code. Uh, depends on the uh, compliance uh, to the organization. And uh, these are the main things uh, we have to uh, uh, focus and uh, giving the bottlenecks to uh, doing these things. But still, uh, we should be able to uh, rectify these things and at the same time we should be able to comply with these uh, compliances and go ahead with our uh, CICD part. So what is the SSOT? It's a single source of truth. So as you know, in uh, when you have a, a source code a repository, it's it's we have to make sure uh, there should be a SSOT. You cannot have like uh, okay one change in the production uh, source code and one production change in the developer source code. You cannot have like a multiple uh, changes in different different changes. It should be in the same, right? So it's really important to have a, a single source of truth. Uh, <clears throat> when you are uh, doing such things like this. So what are the limitations to do with this AWS code commit and code pipeline? The way, main one is there's no any direct connect, direct way to uh, connect your cross-account code commit in the pipelines. So when you're creating the pipeline, you see you have to select the, uh, the code repository. When you select the code commit, there's no such a place to uh, still. So to give you uh, the, the, another account's uh, repository, in your current pipeline. For example, if you're using the uh, code account A of production and uh, development account, so if you're creating the pipeline in the production, there's many ways that uh, you can give the uh, develop account uh, code pipeline URL or the, the name inside the production. So this is a proposed solution. So it's very basic. So you can see we are using AWS code commit and we have three accounts uh, uh, in our OU. This is well, the middle one is the infrastructure account and right side is the develop account and the left side is the production. So what we are going to do is we are going to have one single source of truth, uh, the code repository inside the infrastructure account. So infrastructure account, you can see the code commit and we're using AWS event bridge, I'll come that to later. And we are using uh, cross account uh, IAM roles and uh, we are using the KMS key management uh, service uh, for a store the uh, KMS key for the artifact S3 buckets. Uh, according to the uh, along with the uh, infrastructure, I mean, like accounts. So you see here, first thing we connect the AWS code commit with the code pipeline uh, as a source stage to build the code. So it's it will be a single source of truth. Then we have the event bridge. What does event bridge is doing here? So if there are any changes to the particular branch, for example, I want to trigger the developer pipeline. Uh, so we are using the developer branch, a uh, branch name develop or developer, or any, any branch name you are using. Uh, the event bridge will be a trigger when there's a change inside the uh, developer branch. And it will trigger the event bridge in developer account uh, to trigger the code pipeline. So what will happen, it will pull the code from the uh, infrastructure account and do the code build and store in the artifact in the S3 bucket. So same way to the production, uh, it will uh, trigger, there's a uh, change in, okay, let's go with the tags. Okay, there's a uh, 
a new tag uh, with the uh, you're creating the tag with the version numbers or according to your uh, company policies or it can be uh, another branch uh, it will be trigger the event breach inside the infrastructure account and which will trigger the event breach in production account to do the uh, code pipeline to uh, trigger the pipeline and build so on and it will store in the s3 bucket in the production account so the same game key we are, we are using for uh, uh, encrypt uh, the data inside the artifact of the s3 bucket so limitations in the proper solution is uh, you know once a pipeline is created you cannot upgrade the uh, cross account code command settings for example like branch im roles using the ui so you have to use the uh, aws cli um, or else if you are using the uh, some is like uh, cloud formation templates or the terraform you can be done by this one so later on uh, we'll check the demo how we are going to do this and let's create a dummy pipeline and we test how this is happening so let's go through this demo and i will show you how i have configured this and let's do a small commit to the uh, code commit repo in here the infrastructure account and we'll see how this uh, code pipeline in develop account is going to be executed so i have already logged into my uh, infrastructure account in north virginia so first one we have to check the, the code commit so let's go to the code commit and i have one repository nothing there just uh, a readme file uh, let me develop i'll change my develop branch a readme file and my build spec file so the build spec is very simple i just wanted to uh, execute the code build and show you that uh, it's basically working so it's just uh, echo commands i'm not going to do anything complex here so that's the code commit and i think better to uh better we go to the event bridge we'll go to the im role uh, which is doing the main role here the key person to uh, keep the connectivity between uh, the cross account so i'll go to the im roles So I have created a role here to access from, so see right, this role uh, is assumable from uh, my develop account, which I'm going to uh, switch and show you later to my develop account. So, uh, so entire account can assume this role. I'm not going to put any much restrictions because it's a demo, just I want to show you the, uh, the use case. So here I'm giving code uh, commit full access. Basically, it's only read only access. Just uh, uh, for the demo purpose, I'm just giving you the code commit full access. And this is my uh, the custom uh, the role with the permissions. So I'm going to show you what are the permissions have given. So code commit basically the list branch and here it's list repositories so i'm specify specifying to this exact uh, uh, pool so this is three bucket uh, which will be uh, which which is already in the dev account uh, which the uh, the artifact will be stored uh, the source artifacts so later we can check that and there's three uh, we have these permissions uh, provided and we'll go to this three another one so basically get object list bucket and read so basically only for this uh, particular bucket in the dev account 
and the KMS. This is really important. Okay, make sure you have these permissions uh, to the KMS key. So here we are using a, a KMS employees KMS key inside the infrastructure account. So basically, this is that KMS key. So it should be able to write decrypt, encrypt, and describe key, uh, re-encrypt, and generate data key. These are really important. So uh, if you're not familiar with KMS, I I think you should be able to. Uh, check the documentation of AWS about the KMS. I will put in post uh, below. So later we can do another session maybe for only for the KMS. So I'm going to the KMS key. So this is the KMS key. You should not be uh, uh, revealing this information to the public, but uh, for sake of a demo. So after this, after I recorded this, basically I'm going to delete everything. So I'm going to clean the entire thing. So it's okay. So this is the root account of this current account ID. So um, these are the two roles which I'll be using. Oh, sorry. Which I'll be using in the dev account. One is for the code pipeline service role and one is for the code build service role. So basically those two roles should be able to access this KMS key um, uh, in the pipeline. So that's a part here and here here. Uh, no, sorry, not here. Let's go to the image later. So I will be, uh, I'll put all these uh, policy documents inside the repo so when you're testing you can use the same and you can change it according to your uh, resource names so let's go to the event bridge so I'm using the default event bus so it should be started here And this is my role which I created. So basically, I have the event pattern, I have the target. So what basically happened is here my code repo, any changes uh, related to a reference created or reference updated to a branch which is the developer. The reference name is developer. So any changes to refer, uh, uh, updated to the developer branch which will be uh, the event will be created. And the target is the event bus. Uh, we have to create another event bus inside the develop account, which is this. It will trigger. So you are creating an event inside the infrastructure account to trigger the event bus inside the um, develop account for any reference changes created, updated. Uh, for the developer branch okay so that's mainly all about the uh, uh, setup configuration inside the uh, infrastructure account so don't worry I'll be posting all the uh, related resource like policies documents everything in the repo so you can use it even the this event pattern as well so let's uh, switch to the developer account now we are going to focus mainly on this one. Okay, let's go to the rules here. Okay. So same here. It's looking for changes uh, from the uh, infrastructure account, the same code commit, the same branch. But here, the target is different. It's a code pipeline, uh, which the code pipeline we are going to do the demo today. So it should be have the access uh, to trigger it, and let's see the demo.
to, to demo pipe I'm going to show you for the test so if I show you here basically I'm using the uh, uh, DevOps Pro it's uh, it's uh, it's a repo which I created inside the developer account I just want to show. I, I just assigned this repo because I want to show you the uh, change of the repo after I updated the uh, code pipeline via the CLI. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change here. See in the UI, you cannot change uh, the repo name of any of the cross account. So that's that's what the the use case we are going to try today, right? So I'm just leave it here. Cancel. Discard. So let's get the pipeline configuration JSON file. So what's our pipeline name? It's Dev code pipeline, and um, I'm going to then this. There's some file, and I'm using my dev service account profile. So let's open and see this file. Okay, so this file you can see here the pipeline, the pipeline role ARM, and uh, the artifact locations, which is this three bucket. And this one I have added before. Uh, before I mean like I have tested the this uh, demo like several times so when you created initially uh, you won't be seeing this 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 part so you have to add uh, this syntax there uh, your KMS uh, key like uh, <clears throat> the license name or the key which is uh, the, uh, the infrastructure account which means here this KMS key And you see here my branch name and the repo name should change here. Developer. I'll copy and get my branch name. Sorry, my repo name. Let's call it a little more. So this is the role ARN of in the infrastructure account, which is this one. So when you input the uh, artifact, so this role have the access to the that game is key and this three bucket of the developer account and this part is the code build section and make sure you delete these meta tags because uh, each time when you update the code pipeline to the CLI a new version will be updated so you cannot uh, use the old meta tags Okay, now all good. So make sure about this part and this part as well when you're setting up initially. So you see, 
the account number is infrastructure account i'm using this uh, im rule and the uh, kms key again i'm showing which is this one and this one done now we have to update the pipeline Okay, pipeline updated with the these changes branch name request name. So let's go to the pipeline. New refresh. Okay, now we are in the develop account. Uh, now when you click edit, edit stage, see it's changed. But uh, you cannot update from here again because it, if you see right, if I keep the space and if you click here, See, it says uh, the code commit demo does not exist because it's trying to search in own account. Because uh, that's why I told you that the main restriction is uh, uh, you cannot update these things uh, using the UI. It's still not. I'm sure the AWS will be working on it and uh, later we will be able to update these things simply using the UI. Now cancel it. Discard. Okay. So I'm going to use this and open up cloud nine ID in the infra account. So let's switch to infrastructure. So which is this account and I'm gonna do a small commit change here. ID so previous changes are there so this is my build spec file as I mentioned before for the test I'm gonna put uh, yes no I'm gonna save it Comment basically applying intro. I don't push the changes. Okay. Now in the infrastructure account, so you can see the pipeline here. We have to switch back to the develop account. So let's go to develop account again back. So by the time the pipeline should be triggered already see it's triggered already the commit id the message we put uh, 
is the dev appliance there just building so while building what i'm going to do is i'm going to will we'll make sure this is the commit id of that uh, change so let's uh new tab i'm switching back to the infrastructure account so let's see that it's building yes. A47, so basically 0 E79 to A47. This is a commit ID, so the commit message testing the pipeline. So let's go back to the pipeline. Switching back to the developer account. See, that's the same commit ID. So that's how uh, we can uh, set up a multi-account AWS code commit to uh, trigger the pipelines in other multiple accounts in the same AU or multiple AUs. So this is how you uh, set up. So there's other ways to also do. Uh, this way it's like, uh, I feel like very easy uh, to configure. It's not much hard and you can harden very well using your, all the profile uh, policies and the access so some some places uh, you um, notice that i have given these uh, <clears throat> more access but this purpose of just uh, showing the the use case mm, you can come up with uh, more hardening uh, on that area as well so if you have multiple accounts you can trigger and connect so it's very easy so it's uh, you can uh, in, in this setup you can actually uh, keep your single source of truth and uh, it's very easy to manage basically with the branch mechanism so it's a developed branch here you can set up the master branch or another tag here and if you have UAT you can have a release UAT branch and so on you can set up your uh, pipelines so yes thank you very much if you have any feedback just put in the comments I would like to improve myself uh, if anything like uh, anything you don't understand if you want if you want me to slow down anything else and if you're looking for any other solutions i'd love to uh, work on a lot of use cases so thank you very much for watching this have a nice day bye bye